Okay, welcome back to another video. In this particular video, we are going to look at the work plane tool. The work plane tool. Now, if you've started out in Tinkercad, maybe you're new, and uh, maybe you've built a series of projects, you might be thinking, what are you talking about? The work plane tool? Isn't that that, that blue square down there that we build our projects on? Well, yeah, there that is a blue area where we build our projects, but there's actually a very cool feature in Tinkercad that allows us to do something very interesting as far as our work plane is concerned. So I want to demonstrate that to you. You may not necessarily get any use out of it, uh, but after this video you may be thinking, oh, this could really come in handy for uh, completing certain projects. All right, so let me just kind of show you where I'm going with this by creating a very simple, basic project, and um, <clears throat> we'll, we'll see how the work plane tool can actually benefit us. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring out a cylinder here, and I'm just gonna increase the number of sides all the way to the top. I don't know about you, but I kinda like my cylinders to look like a cylinder. All right, so that's as close as we can get with a max of 64 sides, okay? Now, let's pull out this cone. I'm gonna increase the number of sides of the cone as well. Um, and let's say we want to put the cone on top of the cylinder, okay? The cone on top of the cylinder. So how do we get it on top here? So both of these are on the work plane here. And so what I can do here is I can use this little tool here. The little black cone at the top of your object is the tool that you can click and drag up and down, which elevates your shape um, off or towards the work plane. So I can grab this and I can move it up and down. And you can see there on the right hand side, uh, Tinkercad's also showing me that elevation, how high things are going. All right, so not only does it do that, but if I let go and then do it again, it's actually going to show me not only what the elevation is, but the change in elevation. So let me just go back to the beginning there, what I had, just in case you're not familiar with this tool. Um, this is showing me that I'm six millimeters off the bed, and the upper number is uh, six millimeters change. If I leave that, I unclick it, right, and then I go back to it and change it again. Uh, the bottom one with the little lines is indicating now I'm 13 millimeters off the bed. The upper one says that's a change of 7. So I've gone 7 in the positive direction. So 7 plus 6 is 13. So that's just showing you that. Now what I can also do is kind of type in that number. So in order to get this cone on top of the cylinder, let's check out how high the cylinder is. So it is 20 millimeters in height. So I want this cone to be 20 millimeters off the bed or off the work plane, if you will. So I'm gonna click this tool here, just drag it a little bit just to engage it, and then I can come in here and either type 20, or I can move this up to make sure that it is 20. And since it's a very simple uh, value, I can simply use the tool and get it over there, okay? Now what I wanna do is I wanna get the cone on top of the cylinder. So I can do this in a couple different ways. I can click and drag it over, all right. And that looks pretty good. I am using some pretty simple numbers, but just to be sure, let's use the align tool. Hopefully you've watched the video on the align tool to see how we can align things to each other. So I'll click that again, click align. We can see here that they're actually aligned perfectly because these are grayed out. So this one al would align them left to right. Uh, this one would align them front to back um, and they're grayed out, so they're already aligned. All right, these I'm not gonna touch because I don't want them aligned in the center. I don't want them bottom aligned, they already were, and I don't, certainly don't want them top aligned. So I actually want them aligned like that. So that's actually one way I could get that cone on top of the cylinder. All right, but it's actually not the easiest way. And especially if those numbers were a little bit different, it could pose some difficulty. Uh, but there is another way we could do this using a slightly different tool. So I'm actually going to bring that cylinder back in. I don't know why I deleted it before. Uh, I could always undo that. All right. Um, I'm going to leave the cylinder here. And let me highlight the major problem with what I was doing before. When I drag this cone out, by default, the shape is going to be placed on the work plane. Right Now ideally I'd really like this cone to be placed on top of the cylinder. 
So it would actually be great if the top of the cylinder was the work plane because then I would save a lot of work trying to get things into the air and then maybe moving them around. I still may need to move them around but it may be a little bit easier for me to get that onto the cylinder. Now Tinkercad provides you with the ability to actually change the current or active work plane. By default this blue square is our work plane but if you notice up here on the right hand side above our shapes there are a couple tools here and one, the one on the left, is called the work plane tool and you can see there that the keyboard shortcut is the letter W. What this work plane tool will do is allow me to alter temporarily the work plane. All right, So let me click that and when I bring that out you'll notice if you can look at my mouse there you'll notice a tiny tiny little work plane with a little arrow on it or a cone and what this will allow me to do is bring it over a shape and then alter what the work plane or active work plane is going to be. Now when I move this over the cylinder you'll see number one, from this perspective I could make the top of the cylinder the work plane and if I move it over the sides you can see that it's actually changing over the sides of the cylinder. Now you remember that the cylinder is actually 64 different sides, that's what I set it to. So there's actually 64 different um, areas or surfaces on which I could make the work plane. So let's take a look at what happens. I'm going to move this around um, and I'm just going to click while I'm on top of the cylinder. All right, and what happens here you can see is I have this yellowish, orangish work plane that's kind of been superimposed over the other one. So if I rotate this around, you can actually see the border of where the original work plane is, right down there at the bottom. And now this yellow work plane is kind of taking over. Now what happens is if I bring a shape out, it's going to drop right onto this work plane. All right, and so now if you take a look, you'll see the cone is actually on top of the cylinder. Now, not perfectly, right, because I still need to move it over, but you can see there that the bottom of the cone is at the same spot as I wanted it before because what I did was I set the work plane at the top of the cylinder. So I can now just move that over. I can still align these objects. Let's align those two together and we can see that they're still aligned, right? And so that was actually a really, really simple way of um, adding something to a particular area. Now, what happens if I'm kind of done with that and I want to get back to normal? How do I do that? Well, what you can do is you can just click the work plane tool again and then just click in an area that's not uh, involving any kind of shape. So if I just click over here, then that work plane goes away and now I'm going to be using the traditional work plane, right? So we can see there that that new shape is added there, okay? So that's pretty cool. Now let's actually explore this a little bit more. So uh, let's let's um, take the shape and maybe put some, uh, let's say some eyes on it. Let's pretend this is some kind of a character here and we're gonna put some eyes on it. All right, now uh, we've got this little shape here which is called the half sphere. Looks like a kind of a bubbly eye. Now what I could do to make an eye on the side of that is I could shrink that down first because that looks really big for an eye. So let's shrink that down to like five millimeters. That's good. Now if I want to get it on the side of the cylinder, what I can do now is I can rotate it. So let's grab this rotation tool. And it's tricky sometimes. I'm going to hold down my shift key to get a perfect 90 degrees. Good. All right. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it up into the air. Good. And now I need to click and drag it over here closer to the cylinder. Good, I'm getting it in there. Now that's a little bit high, so let's bring that down a little bit. There we go. And now I may need to explore, you know, exactly forward or back where that should be. But that looks pretty good, okay? Now that wasn't terribly difficult, but it did involve me uh, shrinking the shape, which was fine. I would probably have to do that anyway. Rotating the shape, pulling it up, and then moving it. Well, what if I could use the work plane tool to avoid some of that work. Let's grab the work plane tool and let's bring it over to the cylinder and we can see here that the work plane tool will be able to um, be placed on any one of those surfaces of my cylinder. So I'm actually going to click 
this one right here. Let's get an eyeball right there. Okay. So now the work plane is right on the side of that cylinder. Okay. Now, if I bring this shape out, take a look at what's actually happening. When I bring it out, it's already kind of in the perfect spot. It's rotated already and it's laying right where I want it to lay. All right, now all I have to do is resize that. So let's go ahead and resize that to five millimeters again. Uh, might be a little tricky. And you can always rotate around if you don't like the looks of that. But now if I'm dragging it over here, I can get it kind of right where I want it. And now if I want to recess that into the shape a little bit, I can do that by using my mouse. I can just bring it down here. I could, whoops, a little undo there. I could also use this little tool now. Um, this little tool helped me to lift off the work plane and so uh, I can actually use that to lift off or I can actually push it into the work plane and there we go. All right, so now it's inside there and because the work plane was different I was able to use that. Now I can actually duplicate that, just scoot it over to the other side and I should have something that's fairly symmetrical. All right, very good. And now when I'm done, I can just go ahead and click that work plane tool again and click off and there we go. All right, so that's a pretty cool feature. Now, one thing you may have noticed when we were doing that is that when we're pulling the work plane tool, there is a little cone there and it is pointing in a particular direction. What we can do is actually hold down our shift key and what that will do is cause the cone to point in a different direction. And basically the pointing of the cone shows you where the top and where the bottom of the work plane are. So for example, if I am holding it right here, uh, let's actually escape. I'm gonna do that again. I wanna rotate around just so you can see. Um, if I place it right here, the, the place where the cone is pointing on the right hand side of my cursor is the top of the work plane. If I hold down the shift key, the cone is now pointing inward and what that means is that opposite side is going to be the top of the work plane. So if I left it here, what would, let's see, I'm going to hold that, it's pointed in and I'm going to click. Okay. Now you can see it looks similar to what I had before, but I'm actually looking at the bottom of the work plane now, and this is the top of the work plane. So if I drag something out, let's just say I drag a, a sphere out, what's happening here is the sphere is actually being dropped on this side of the work plane instead of this side of the work plane. And that may be exactly what you wanted, um, but I just want to show you that you can actually alter which is the top and which is the bottom of the work plane. So I'm actually going to get rid of that. And if I did that on accident, what I can do is sometimes it can get a little tricky getting back there. There you go. I can now do that again, but this time I have selected the top of the work plane. So now that is exactly where I would want it to be. All right, I don't know why I'm putting a sphere on that little shape, but there you go. Uh, maybe we could put a little uh, torus on there and maybe make that a mouth or something in this little character here. I can resize that. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Let's put it, whoop, that's not what I wanted either. Let's use the arrow keys. They're much easier. All right, there we go. And that put, puts that little guy on the surface. And now I have a very interesting looking character here. All right. so. The work plane tool, very useful if you're placing different shapes in different parts of your project and you want to make it a little bit easier on yourself, go ahead and try it out.